Thank you, William and uh, MP for the introductions. Um, uh, as, as you guys just heard from, from William, there's you know, plenty of different executors out there. Uh, and there are many things, many different things that we want to measure uh, and compare uh, each of these executors against each other uh, and you know, to, view, to view different performance uh, of each one. Uh, and so that's where um, this idea of a reference system uh, came to be. Uh, and yeah, I'll go through uh, talking uh, through what a reference system is and then uh, what was the reference system that we've implemented. Um, so I guess on every slide, I've ind also included the uh, uh, repository, if you guys would like to check that out. It's open sourced, it's on uh, github.com in our Ross real-time working group uh, just, and look under reference system. So if anyone is on their laptop right now, feel free to go check that out during the talk. Um, okay. So what is a reference system? Um, okay, so we have kind of defined a reference system as being uh, a system that simulates a real world scenario uh, rather than trying to only uh, define a theoretical one. Um, uh, essentially what this does is allow us to um, replicate real world scenarios that um, you know, are reasons why to have different executors and, and reasons why to implement them. Uh, Part of having a reference system represent a real world scenario is that it also can be repeatable uh, by many different people uh, and, and parties on different platforms, um, which is really good because you know if you're developing a specific algorithm or something and you want to test it for autonomous driving, uh, you may want to always run it on some uh, ECU platform or specific embedded uh, system, uh, but then other people can't test it for their you know UAV drone. Uh, and so that's where um, we've tried to kind of enable uh, a reference system that can be repeatable and uh, confirmed by many different parties and not uh, platform specific, I guess, for, um, you know, a very expensive ECU or something. Uh, and then what these tests can do uh, is that they can measure um, set up some set of performance metrics uh, in order to uh, compare the results across different executors and, and see what's, what's different. Um, between each one uh, by only changing the executor, but then implementing the same reference system across all of the different executors. Um, and below, uh, so you'll see this uh, node graph uh, many times, I think, in the future talks and after me today. Um, but essentially, this is the first reference system that we came up with. Um, I'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, but this is the AutoWare reference system. It replicates uh, kind of a real world scenario for an autonomous vehicle uh, with a few LIDARs, you know, a, a map, uh, visualization, and then also a, another map for like the street data and stuff. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different nodes um, doing different processing. Uh, and yeah, I'll go into talking about each uh, node type. Oh. Um, so yeah, so uh, a reference system could be defined as, you know, just two nodes, right, a publisher and subscriber, um, but then uh, you kind of lose out on uh, measuring certain things that different executors uh, uh, can implement, right, and, and, and different uh, benefits of using different executors um, would be lost kind of if you only had a two node system, you know, that measured, um, I don't know, the throughput, right, or, or something like that. Um, it's not as informative as having a full system where you can uh, measure specific things while other work is being done um, in the background. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, what we came up with for this reference system uh, is some base node types. Um, so we looked at um, the AutoWare reference system uh, and, and many others and realized that each of these node types could be kind of broken down into uh, some building blocks that we could use um, going forward to build more complex systems. Uh, so the first sensor, uh, the first uh, base node type is a, is what we call a sensor node. It's essentially the input to the system uh, has a single publisher and zero subscribers. So all it is is publishing data into the system, uh, and it's it's publishing at some fixed rate, right? So you can you can imagine like a, a camera running at thirty hertz it's essentially only publishing images to the system. And, and that's the output of the node. Um, so uh, th that can be kind of simplified, right, for um, all of these different nodes as well. So technically like a, like a map 
or um, uh, another a visualizer could also be an input to the system. And so all of those are uh, sensor node node types. And I've tried to color or color code each number along with the the node type that they have uh, they have. Okay, uh, so the next one is transform node. Um, the transform nodes uh, essentially have one subscriber and one publisher. You can think of them as you know subscribing to an image, uh, doing some processing to that image, and then publishing the image, uh, you know the post process image uh, after that. So it's it's consuming some data and then publishing uh, that same data slightly transformed uh, into into some other type. Uh, that processing time, that, that transformation time, uh, takes some uh, fixed amount of time uh, after a message is received, and then it publishes that, that message, uh, kind of like forwarding it on uh, to the next node in the pipeline. Um, after that, we have uh, what we call fusion nodes. Um, it essentially has two subscribers and then one publisher. So it combines you know, two different subscriptions into one single output. Uh, and then does some processing on those those messages when, when they're all received. Um, there is then a cyclic node or a cyclic node. Um, essentially, it ha it can have uh, n number of subscribers, so you know, ten or or twenty even, uh, and then one single single publisher. Um, in this case, um, I think the behavior planner has six total subscribers, and then one single publisher. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, also one thing I'm, uh, I forgot to mention, you may see two different arrows coming out of um, uh, each node. Um, those are actually the same uh, data, but subscribed uh, by, by two different nodes, right? So the behavior planner publishes one single topic, but then it's subscribed um, to by, by two different nodes. Um, okay, so the next uh, the next node the, the next base node type is uh, the command node, uh, and essentially this is the last node in the system. Uh, you can think of this as uh, you know like the uh, the the speed dial on your car, right? So you you're pressing down the gas pedal. That's the input to the system. Uh, the gas speeds up. You know the the car car speeds up, and then your speedometer um, the needle increases, showing you um, what's happened. Uh, and so for our reference system, essentially what it is, it, is it prints out the, the statistics that's calculated um, inside the system, um, uh, like drop messages and latencies and things like that, which I'll, I'll cover in a bit. Um, and then we have the sixth and uh, kind of specific uh, node um, that uh, William talked a little bit about. Uh, it's called a, um, essentially a intersection node. And what it does, you can think of it as just like an intersection, like a four-way stop, where you have you know data coming in from from one direction, and data coming in from another direction, and they're kind of intersecting at the same node, but then going out through through different uh, publishers after some processing's done on it. Um, uh, with this specific node type, uh, you'll see later uh, in Ralph's talk, the uh, callback group executor um, is actually. Uh, you, you can prioritize, you know, one one direction or one intersection uh, compared to the other, uh, which is really good uh, for for some use cases. Uh, for for this use case specific, you can think of, you know, like the user can change some settings on the cluster detector, which is like an object detector on the point cloud, um, and you don't really want to prioritize setting the settings. You want to prioritize processing the data, right? Uh, and so that's uh, okay, uh, so after that, uh, a reference system. So we have the base node types, um, and then you can think of kind of you know what are these nodes passing to each other, right? So what's actually being uh, published and subscribed to, right? Uh, and that's where we have this idea of uh, reference interfaces, which essentially are message types with some fixed size, right? Uh, and and we've defined uh, one single message type so far. Uh, it's, uh, it's on the left hand side here. It's called a message four kilobytes long. So essentially it's a, a message that's uh, four, four kilobytes long and it has some, some data inside of it. Essentially we store inside of it a, a counter to keep track of how many messages we published, the timestamp, uh, keep track of how many samples have been dropped. 
and then also uh, which node name uh, kind of is in uh, has published the, the message. Um, right, so we, we've only implemented one so far, uh, but uh, many more could be added, you know, uh, uh, the idea is we could have, you know, a message four kilobytes long, and then we could have a message, you know, eight kilobytes longer and then, you know, a hundred and then one gigabyte long or something like that. You can imagine, you know, different uh, message sizes could affect the system. Um, one key concept is this first line here. Actually, I should have probably um, put this in bold, but uh, so essentially the same message type is used by all of the nodes in the entire system during one single experiment run. So all of the data you'll see, um, you know, presented after me, uh, they all use the same message type. It's all using this message for kilobytes uh, long. Uh, and uh, yeah, the important part is then we can compare different executors without, you know, changing the, the data size or anything like that. Um, so, okay. Uh, um, the next thing to talk about, kind of the next concept, the big idea is, so we have the base node types, we have the message types that is being passed between node to node. Um, and then we need to kind of talk about how we define uh, work, right? So um, each node, when it receives a message, needs to be doing some sort of processing because that's actually what happens in the real world. Uh, and if, if it kind of wasn't doing this, if it was just nodes passing uh, the message as fast as possible, uh, you know, the, 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 the data that and the, the measurements that we would take wouldn't be representative of, of what actually happens in the real world. Uh, so the problem with this, though, is that essentially, uh, you know, if you're if you're doing some sort of number crunching, uh, your your laptop your with your NVIDIA graphics card might be a lot faster than a Raspberry Pi, right? And so um, that's the idea. Essentially, we need to also define uh, a fixed platform which uh, we've all ran these tests on a Raspberry Pi 4B. Um, I believe we all tried to have the four gigabyte version. Um, and then, uh, so essentially uh, by running this, this test uh, or this, this program called the number cruncher benchmark, you can see how long uh, this number crunching processing will take uh, on you know, some platform. And so uh, let me highlight that. Right, so uh, essentially the pseudo work, I've, I've kind of skipped over this, sorry. Um, uh, what we're doing inside of each node is it's finding the prime numbers uh, starting at three, going up to some maximum value, uh, finding all the prime numbers in that, that range. And once, once it does, then it you know, publishes the message after that. Um, but, but what you can configure, depending on the platform that you're running on and depending on how much processing time you wanna take on each node, you can change this maximum number uh, to, to to simulate you know, different amounts of work uh, done by the system. Uh, right now, and for everyone, I think on, on the, who will, who will talk after me, um, we've used this uh, roughly 10 millisecond uh, number uh, for each node. So you can imagine essentially each node when it receives a message will be doing uh, 10 milliseconds of processing and then publishing uh, the data after that. Uh, okay. So that covers kind of the idea of what a reference system is. Uh, and then we will talk about right now uh, the first implementation of uh, a reference system, which we chose to do uh, on the AutoWare reference system. Um, you've seen this, this node graph right here. Uh, and essentially this replicates uh, almost exactly what the AutoWare auto project looks like. If you were to run that project, open up uh, RQT graph, um, this is very similar to what you would see. Um, you can see some sensors, you know, some, some transformer nodes, uh, fusion nodes, intersection nodes, cyclic nodes, oh, uh, and then also command nodes at the end. Um, what's important here and what I've tried to highlight in this image is that there is a specific signal chain uh, from the front LiDAR driver to this object collision estimator uh, that is usually very important for, you know, this sort of project, right? Uh, and it's, it gives us something to measure where, you know, we want, uh, well, I'll talk about it in a little bit, um, but essentially this signal chain, uh, you, can, you can imagine why it's important, right? Because the, the autonomous vehicle needs to know what's in front of it 
as, as quickly as possible uh, to avoid a crash. Um, and so by identifying this signal chain, uh, you know, what can we measure? Uh, we can measure uh, essentially all of these key performance indicators. Uh, and like I said, so the latency from the front LiDAR driver uh, to the object collision estimator um, needs to be, the, the latency needs to be as low as possible, right? Where you don't want it to be taking a long time in that signal chain. Otherwise the vehicle might not see something in its way and, and get in a car crash. So uh, we can measure this for each executor. And then we can also measure um, the jitter of the cyclic timer of the behavior node. So essentially, um, with uh, the processing and, and pseudo work being done by the other nodes, uh, the behavior planner timer um, might be slightly faster, might be slightly slower, depending on you know what's going on in the system and how the executor um, prioritizes timers and, and things like that. And so in general, right, the lower the jitter and drift, uh, the better. Uh, and the next thing we can measure is the, the count of number of drop samples for that signal chain. So essentially between the front LiDAR driver to the object collision estimator, we don't wanna be dropping any, any messages, um, which makes sense, right? Because you want your vehicle to, to see what's, what's coming. And if you drop a message, then you might miss something, right? Um, so the lower number of drop samples, uh, the better. Uh, the next thing we can measure is CPU and memory utilization. Um, in general, right, the, the lower the better for both of those because it lets you use a smaller CPU uh, or it gives you more uh, you know, space for, for doing other things. Okay, I tried to go a little quick because uh, I knew we were crunched for time. Um, but yeah, any, any questions so far about the reference system? Uh, so this introduction so far, you can think of all of these KPIs. Um, the future talks after me, you'll see some, some graphs uh, showing each of these KPIs for each executor, comparing them to each other. Um, so yeah, any questions? Thanks, Evan. Um, there, there's one question, how are inputs for sensors stimulated? So the inputs for sensors, essentially it's just a, uh, uh, it's a message created uh, inside of that sensor node. Uh, it's the, the message type of four kilobytes long. Uh, and then uh, it's just a, a, the message size, right? And then the, there's no data inside of it. It starts off as a, where we are indexing uh, a counter inside of each message. So essentially the, the sensor node will be publishing a message just like a, you can think of the, the default, like, you know, ROS2 talker example, where it's publishing a string that counts up from, you know, one, two, three, four. Uh, that's the same thing we're doing uh, inside of the message type. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's it. And it, it sends cyclically. Huh? Yeah. Yes. With a timer. All right. Yes. With a timer. Yeah. Thanks, Evan.